Hello, welcome back. In the last session, we have represented this scenario in the form of a quadratic equation and if you remember, we got the quadratic equation as x square minus 10x minus 5600 equal to 0. You can just try it again. We have equated the difference of the time equal to 1 hour in the second scenario minus the first scenario because the second scenario it will take more time obviously it will be bigger number minus the first scenario the distance is speed into time or time equal to distance by speed okay now how to solve the quadratic equation the first method is factorization nothing but splitting the middle term which we know since long time so we have to find out now two numbers such that sum equal to minus 10 and the product is equal to minus 5600. We see that the product is negative. That means we know that one number is negative and the other number is positive and the sum is negative. That means the bigger number is negative and the smaller number is positive. So we have to find out two numbers such that their difference is 10 and the product is minus 5600. For that we look at the factors of 5600 where the difference is 10 so let's look at all the options let us say we have 56 we have 100 then we have 70 we have 80 i think 70 80 have a difference of 10 so can i write it as minus 80 plus 70 then it will become x square minus 80x plus 70x minus 5600 equal to 0 x into x minus 80 plus 70 into x minus 80 equal to 0 now that means that x minus 80 multiply with x plus 70 equal to 0 if you equate them individually I will get x equal to 80 or I will get x equal to minus 70. We know that neg speed cannot be negative. So this is ruled out. That means the uniform speed is 80 km per hour. So the speed after reduction is 70 km per hour. Let's cross check this. A train travels a distance of 560 at a uniform speed. We know that this is nothing but 80. So the time taken is nothing but equal to 560 by 80 that is 7 hours this is t1 let's go to the second scenario if the speed had been 10 kilometers less that is 70 kilometers now it is 560 divided by 70 that's equal to 8 hours so you can see that the difference between them is 1 hour so our solution is correct now let's continue with couple of examples where we will form the quadratic equation and we will try to solve it by using factorization splitting the middle terms. Let's try to solve this problem. Find two consecutive positive integers so sum of whose squares is 685. So we will start. We will say first let that those positive integers be x and x plus 1 because we have been told two consecutive positive integers. Okay, consecutive means difference is 1. Sum of whose squares, that means I have to square them, x square, sum, that means I have to add them, x square plus x plus 1 whole square equal to 685. Now we have to simplify this into form of quadratic equation. So let's do that, x square is x square plus a plus b whole square, a square, x square plus b square, that is 1, plus 2ab, that is 2x equal to 685 now if you simplify x square x square like terms so we can add them 2x square plus 2x plus 1 minus 685 equal to 0 can i say 2x square plus 2x minus 684 equal to 0 or if i divide by 2 because Keeping it simple will help me to solve easily. x square plus x minus 342. I can take 2 common equal to 0. 
that means x square plus x minus 342 equal to 0. Now I have to find out the roots of this quadratic equation. So for that I have to use splitting the middle terms. Now let's look at this and try to find out what will be the numbers x square plus x minus 342 equal to 0. That tells me that sum is plus 1 and the product is sum is plus 1 and the product is minus 342. Whenever I have product negative that means I have to do subtraction of two numbers such that their difference is 1 and their product is 342. Now what will be the numbers? For that we will do the factorization. We will we'll do the factors of 342 prime factorization. Let us start with 2. I have 171. Then 3 will not go. 4 will not go. 5 will not go. 6, 7. What are the other numbers? 9 will go. We can check for 9. 9 will go 38 times. Then we have after 9 we have 18. 18 will go 19 times. Anything else we are missing? Or let us do this in a standard way. We will directly do this. We will say 2 171. Then we say 3 57. Then we say again 3 19. And after that 1 19 1. That means this can be written as 2 into 3 into 3 into 6 into 18 into 19. So, we can have 2, we can have 6, we can have 9, but we are interested in a difference of 1. I think that is available here between 18 and 19. There is also one easier way I want to tell you. Whenever you see that the difference is always 1 or 2, what you can do is take the square root of this number. What is the meaning of square root multiplying with the same number? Here the difference is 1 or 2 means almost they are equal. So find out approximately what is the square root. Square root is 18 plus. 18 square is 324 and 19 square is 361. That means these numbers should be somewhere around there. So you can check automatically for 18 and 19. That also will help you. So let us write down the next step now. Based on that we have x square plus 19x minus 18x minus 342 equal to 0. If I take x common, I will have x into x plus 19 minus 18 into x plus 19 equal to 0. That gives me x equal to 18 or x equal to minus 19. But we will rule out this because we have been told very clearly positive integers. So x is equal to 18. So the numbers are x comma x plus 1. That means the numbers are 18 comma 19. If you just let us check that. Let us square them out. 18 square plus 19 square. We can check. 18 square is 324. 19 square is 361. You just add them up. You will get 685. So we are good to go. Let us solve one more problem. Let us solve this problem. We have been given the altitude of a right triangle is 17 centimeters less than its base. If the hypotenuse is 25 centimeters, find the other two sides. We Obviously, right triangle means we have to use Pythagoras theorem. We know that. Altitude of a right triangle is 17 centimeters less than its base. So, let us say altitude is x. Then base will be x plus 17. Because we have been told that altitude is 17 centimeters less than the base. Now, we will apply Pythagoras theorem. We will write down x square plus x plus 17 whole square is equal to 25 square. Next step will be applying a plus b whole square. We will have x square plus 17 square is 289 plus 2ab 2 into 17x is 34x equal to 25 square that is 625. So you will get x square x square add up 2x square 
plus 34x plus 289 minus 625 equal to 0. So, the next step will be 2x square plus 34x minus 336 equal to 0. If you subtract them. So, divide by 2 to make it simple x square plus 17x minus 168. So, we need we are now we are in the form of ax square plus bx plus c quadratic equation. Now, we have to solve this. So, it is nothing but quadratic polynomial how to find out the zeros splitting the middle term. So, we need two numbers such that we will write down here sum equal to plus 17 and the product is equal to minus 168. Again, the product is negative. That means, I need two numbers. One is plus and one is minus. So, that means, I need a difference of 17 between them. So, let us write down the factors of 168 somewhere. 168 factors. I will start from here. 1 is there. 2 is there. Then, we have 3. When we have 4, then we have 7. Then, we have 12. 14, then we have 21, we have 24, we have 42, we can actually write them more, but I think we found that. We need a difference of 17, so we have 24 and 7. So, we will write it as plus 24x minus 7x, x square plus 24x minus 7x minus 168 equal to 0, which can be written as x into x plus 24 minus 7 into x plus 24 equal to 0 or you can say x equal to 7 or x equal to minus 24. x cannot be negative therefore x is equal to 7. If x equal to 7 then altitude is 7 and the base is 24. We can check Pythagoras theorem 7 square plus 24 square 7 square plus 24 square equal to 49 plus 576 which is equal to 625 that is equal to 25 square. So, we can cross check whether we did this part the solution correct or not. So, in the next session we will continue with these examples and we try to solve some more examples related to quadratic equations solving them by factorization method then we will go to completing the squares method and after that quadratic formula so i'll catch you in the next session thanks for your time and support bye for now